Stitcher Cares. I'm your host, Jason Noble. And with me today, I have Aaron Omer, Executive Director at Camp Rise Above. Aaron, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me, Jason. Well, we're going to have a good conversation today. <laughs> we're going to be talking about Camp Rise Above. Can you tell us about what that organization and how it started? Yes, I would love to. Um, Camp Rise Above was founded in Mount Pleasant back in like 2010. So we've been around a long time and we are a local small organization that tries to create places of belonging for people in our community that often don't have that. So we started with a focus on children with medical needs, challenges, and disabilities, providing camp experiences for them that That's were awesome. adapted to their needs. And over the years, we continue to do that, but we've also been able to fold in life skills training, adult programming, and overnight summer camps, as well as retreats throughout the year. So our focus is really creating a more inclusive low country. That's awesome. Uh, it's about bringing people together. So what was that leading passion that helped create Camp Rise Above? We are founded by um, our wonderful founder who still lives in Mount Pleasant, Miss Barbara Denton. Um, she founded a camp up in North Carolina, decades ago for children with cancer and their siblings. And when she moved down here to Charleston as a hospice nurse, she realized looking around that there were so many other chronic conditions that children were dealing with, and they did not have the same resources or the ability to create connections like maybe other populations did. And so she, she really created Camp Rise Above as a way to fill that gap for those families and provide that experience. And it's just grown and grown into what it is today. I was a um, an elementary school teacher before I had this job. And I, during my tenure as a teacher, had multiple students go through really significant health events. Um, I had a student pass away. I had students on homebound because they were getting treatment for sickle cell. Um, one of my students um, was diagnosed with a brain tumor when I was teaching her. And so throughout that time, I felt like I was being led towards a different direction. And when I learned about Camp Rise Above and they were looking for their first employee, I jumped on board and prayed and I'm still here. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. I love, well, thank you for telling us like your your journey to also come to Camp Rise Above. You know, and I'm just thinking as like an adult or a child that goes mm -hmm. to Camp Rise Above, what are some of the activities that they will be involved with and engaged in? Yeah, so we've really always um, prided ourselves on offering opportunities that are usually off the table for our campers, right? So we have campers that come with cerebral palsy or other um, illnesses and maybe they can't walk. Maybe they're in a chair or they use a walker. At Camp Rise Above, they're able to go to the top of the rock wall because of adaptive equipment and professional staff. Um, they're able to shoot a bow and arrow even if they can't pull back the bow. Um, and we really try to just eliminate all those boundaries where everybody feels they know they're going to come and it's going to be a space that was made specifically for them with the support that they need to succeed. And so that's a real treat for a lot of our campers because that's yeah. not how the general society is to them. It's usually much more stressful to partake in recreation and, um, and just be out and about in the low country, but we create kind of that pocket where they really do belong. That's wonderful. So yeah. they were able to shoot a bow for the first time. Yeah. Can you share with us a story about where uh, uh, an athlete or someone that came out, right, a <laughs> camper came out and they were able to do something for the first time they never were able to do before, before Camp Rise Above. What was that like? What was the experience that happened and what was that like? Yeah, so I have so many stories that come to mind. Um, one really small um, snippet of one is we have um, a couple female um, campers that came out to day camp for a few years, and now we have overnight camps, and we do archery at camp, one of the favorite activities, as you can imagine. Um, and these girls realized that they were pretty good, and they are homeschooled, so they don't have a school program that they can do archery through. But together, they joined a year-round archery team for homeschooled kids, and they ended up going to, like, state and, like, <laughs> doing really well. <laughs> and it's like they learned archery and learned that they had that skill at camp, and then that was a way for them to continue their friendship throughout the year was taking part in that team. And it just for us, that's a huge thing. We want our campers to go home and say, like, 
I can do this. Like yes. I'm really good at the climbing yes. wall and I had no idea I could. My mom won't let me go up it because they're so nervous and I'm a mom. I get it. You put them in a bubble, but you know, um, that's one of our big successes is just that growth in confidence. Yes. Um, my very first summer, I will tell this story. It's one of my favorites. My very first summer, we had two campers that were in, um, they were so young. They were like six years old each. And it was our camp for kids with heart and kidney um, diseases. And both of these campers were six years old and they had um, both had heart transplants and they went through the whole two days of camp until the very last activity. They were, they became fast friends, best friends, talked about everything, but they never talked about the fact that they both had heart transplants. Like they, it didn't even occur to them that that's why they were there. They were just kids at camp Yes, because we are just there to make it as normal and fun. And it wasn't until they were trying to outdo one another. Like I have more goldfish in my bag than you do. <laughs> and I got an extra popsicle at lunch. And one of the campers said, well, I got a new heart. And the little girl looked at him and she said, so did I. And before you know it, they're pulling up their shirts and showing off their scars yes. and their brains. Could, it was so incredible to see they'd never met a kid their age who had had that same experience. And it just instantly created this bond with them. And I just love that it happened at the very end of camp because they were just enjoying each other as friends before then. Isn't so. that awesome? Yeah. Well, I mean, those are wonderful stories. I mean, here are these they're they're kids they're still <laughs> kids and they're going through these life challenges and you're like camp rise above is just like the name applied it, it is rising above whatever they're facing to then have whatever is quote unquote normal right they're not f focusing on their ailment or their disability they're focusing on what they can do and an experience that they can have absolutely that they we couldn't maybe have before i love that you picked up on that because that's a huge kind of tenant of our program is that strength based program we don't focus on our um, restraints, what we can't do, what we're held back by, we focus on what strengths we do have, which make us unique and we can grow in. So we even um, sometimes on our name tags at camp, we'll write our top three strengths. And that's how we identify with one another is like, you know, like, oh, you are really great at making friendships and you're really competitive. Like that's cool. So am I. And it's like, it's just a different perspective. And we don't have a lot of time with our campers, but we try to make the most of it and really send them home with that new um, perspective on who they are. That's awesome. I think that's great advice for everyone who's watching yeah, this team. So. Write down your top three strengths. Okay. <laughs> Especially if you go to like a social event, like, hello, my name is, put, put your name and put your top three strengths. It will drive a conversation. It I will. Would imagine. People <laughs> will talk to you. <laughs> like, oh, I've never done a podcast before. What is that like? Right. Okay. Now I love hearing the stories about the children, about the kids. Right. But what about. Uh, stories about the adults because we mentioned adults are also available to come, come from the camp rise above what kind of impact are we seeing those adults have with these life challenges um coming out of camp rise above so our above and beyond program is our programming for adults and this was kind of founded a few years ago um one of the perks of being a small organization is that we can listen to our community yes. and hear what their needs are. And we can really pivot quickly to mm -hmm. fill, fill that need. So um, as our campers were growing up and we were becoming more and more enmeshed in the community of our families, they were coming to us and saying, well, you know, Billy's turning 18 soon and, you know, go, you know, finishing high school, a lot of these services are ending, but we've built this community and we don't want it to go away. There are great organizations doing a lot of um, work with adults with disabilities in the community that we absolutely love beyond basic heart SC are two great examples. Mm -hmm. And we understand that they are doing all they can, but they're on wait lists. There's just not enough. Yeah. And, and you think about how many um, options we all have, right. As adults of all the things we want to be part of, and we're, they're open to us. Those options yes. don't necessarily aren't open to all of our families um, who have adults in their family with um, maybe developmental delays or autism or things like that. So we focused on kind of that above and beyond programming, turning into more of a community based okay. programming. So these campers, these participants get to see their friends, have these outings. We have a weekend of um, adult camp. It is so much fun. We do all the traditional camp activities, but it's also more of like a, a retreat vibe where everyone gets to hang out. Everyone's in line for coffee in the morning. And um, we also do life skills programs throughout the year and just really try to give them more options. That's really what we're here for is just creating, again, those places and broadening their community so they feel like they have more places where they fit.
I, I, I believe community is so important to, mm-hmm. to have a, a place where you're feeling uh, like you belong and because you do belong and a place where you could be a, a, in a, a, have that. There's always a little bit of anxiety anytime you go into a new environment, but then feel uncomfortable because you're, you're, you're re- resonating with the other people that are there. And I think that just makes the community stronger together. That was the purpose of Clear Picture Cares is bringing the story that the stories that you're sharing with Camp Rise Above and other nonprofits and charities here in our local country to not only my clients, but to our listeners and people that follow us. And it's making those connections so that we can help the community get better, stronger together. I, I love that. And we love nothing more than partnering with other organizations, learning about what other people do and trying to really connect the community with all the resources they can have. Because yes. there's people doing such great work, but really? it's all got to fit together in pieces that are accessible right, to the community at large. So um, we love opportunities like this. And that's such a big part of it. So. I can only imagine, right? Like you're on a waiting list to get into a program, right? And that patience that you got to pack, you know, we got to pack patients getting on 17 in Mount Pleasant. That patience you got to pack. And then like, I'm, I'm, I'm saying this from my heart to the, to those that are watching and listening is if you're, if you get impatient while you wait to get your table at a restaurant, imagine being in a waiting list so that you could be part of that community. And this is what Camp Rise Above is working on with that community-based approach. And I find that to be just awesome, uh, uh, commendable, and I love where it's headed. Let's talk about some other things that are coming up around the corner. What are some of the events that are coming up that we should know about? Absolutely. So we stay really busy throughout the year. We do um, anywhere from four to six in-hospital camps a month. And that is um, really heavily based down here in Charleston at the MUSC facility. So we're at Sean Jenkins two to three times a month um, doing camp. We bring in all of camp basically for that one day. And patients, whether we're in the cardiac unit or we're in the atrium, patients, siblings, parents, nurses, everybody that needs a break and needs some camp gets to come (laughs) and enjoy that. We're at Summy Medical Pavilion. And um, so we're we're always busy with those programs because we feel like that's really important. We recognize that not all of our people in our community are able to come out to an actual Mm -hmm. summer camp. Then during the summer, we gear up, we do day camps here at James Island County Park, been doing those since 2013. And that's a great program for our campers that need a little bit more support or maybe are younger starting out. And then our overnight camps have been um, going on since 2021. That's a real big step for us. We love, um, love that program. That starts in June this year. It's at Camp Cole, which is in Eastover, South Carolina. Um, Camp Cole is a great partner. They built this great, amazing, accessible site. They wanted other organizations like us to be able to use it. Um, the only downside to Camp Cole is that it is in Eastover, South Carolina. So it's two hours away. And Jason, a lot of our families aren't able to travel that way, travel that far. Some of their doctors say, no, that's too far from MUSC. And our goal is always, you know, we want to be able to um, eventually bring that kind of campus to the low country yeah. because the amount of um, services we could offer and programming um, opportunities, as well as just a place for the community to have that inclusive campus is something that we're really lacking. So we're working on that, but you asked about programs and I got ahead how, of myself. <laughs> how, would you, how are you working on that? What are some of the things that we should know as Absolutely. listeners to the conversation? Absolutely. So I think it's really important for listeners to know that one in three South Carolinians have a disability. That makes it the largest minority group in the state. Um, And we feel really strongly about the fact Camp Cole is in Columbia. It is already full. It's only been around two or three years. It's completely packed, full to the brim every weekend, every week there's stuff going on. Camp Spearhead is in Greenville. It's a little bit different, but the same kind of idea went into it. Um, Charleston has nothing. Why do we have nothing? We say that we're this great town and we are. I love Charleston. Been here a long time. We are not accounting for the needs of a third of our community. When we don't think about inclusion, when we build new spaces, when we have new businesses, when we look at parks, um, we have some great examples of how that's changing, which is wonderful. And we really are working now where we're meeting with community leaders, possible land donors, um, 
a lot of just behind the scenes stuff to see if we can get any traction going on this vision we've had for years. We've spent 10 years looking at land all the way from Ravenel to, <laughs> um, to Alwanda to Monk's Corner, trying to find a space that could get to MUSC in an emergency if needed. That's right. But we could have that kind of respite for our campers, for our families, for our entire community to enjoy. Because when you build a space that's not only accessible, like you think ADA, like Rams, when you build a space that's designed to be completely inclusive, everyone uses the same doors for everything. Every activity and part of the space is accessible and thoughtful. It costs a little more up front, but then you never have to retrofit yeah. it. And it just creates that calm. You don't have to worry about when you go to that space, you don't have to worry. Am I going to be able to get my kid? from point A to point B? Is there going to be a sensory friendly space for them there? You know that there is, and you know that you can. And that peace of mind is really what we're working towards. So that is our big stretch goal that we really are working with other organizations on and just kind of creating that momentum underneath. So stay tuned. And if you're interested in knowing more about that, please do reach out because that's a big dream that we have. And um, our families are really excited about it. And so are we. Now we're going to talk some more, but how can someone reach out? Oh my gosh. So on our website, it's a beautiful website, camprisebove.org. All of our contact information is there. You can reach out directly to me. We're a really small staff, Jason. You won't get lost. There's only three of us. <laughs> So you can reach out to whoever you want on the website, but the, um, but the three of us are, um, all of our information is there. People are already calling. This yeah, is what I was going to say. So you got, but so go camprisebove.org. Camp okay. But do you have any, any events coming up uh, for like fundraising events, anything that I, I can come to yes. and check out? Absolutely. Well, first, we'd love to invite you to camp. Come visit. Okay. Come see the magic in person. We love visitors. Um, just clear it with us beforehand. That's we right. know you're coming. Get your little <laughs> golf cart ride. Um, but we also do have on March 8th, we have our second annual Glamping Gala, which is going to be at the Cotton Dock at Boone Hall. Oh, wonderful. This is a really fun event. This was our first black tie gala last year. It was one of the best events that we absolutely loved it. We do have some tickets left, um, but we work with the best party planners and people in the business. They all come together to really donate and make this event happen for us. And so if you like to get dressed up, you like to come to pretty places and have great food and a really fun time, live band. We're basically transforming the cotton dock into a glamping tent. It's going to be insane. <laughs> so, so dust off the suits. Okay. Get the nice dresses. <laughs> come on out March 8th. March or register. 8th, March 8th. Go to, go yeah. to camprisebub.org. Camp It'll pop up right at you and you can buy your tickets. Do that. I mean, I mean, okay, March 8th. Get out there. You got time <laughs> as you watch this to, to go ahead and register. But what a great way to just meet great people, work with a great organization, go to a wonderful event. My only suggestion is, could we have name tags with our top three strands? I will have some ready for anybody that wants. <laughs> <laughs> I'll wear one to start it off. And Just to start it off. Yeah. We can't have her go alone on this, okay? Yeah. So we got to do it with you. So you got that wonderful event that's yeah. coming up. Okay, that's going to be really cool. Now, someone who's listening right now, I know someone out there right now is listening and watching, and they're going, I want to get involved. I just... I don't know if it's with my time, or my, 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 my experience yeah. with finances. It could be a number of different things. What are some of the things that Camp Rise Above, what do you all need and how could they help? Yeah, I love that question. Um, you know, we really are a small organization and we thrive on volunteers. We were volunteer run for, you know, years. So for us, what we really need um, is more people. Um, in our corner, more people that advocate for, you know, us that advocate for our campers and families, and that can look all sorts of ways. We have um, a really strong core of volunteers for our summer camps. We have all of our medical staff volunteers, all of our counselors volunteer. Think about this. We're going to have 90 kids for four nights at a sleepaway camp. Often this is their first time away from family and we have them all and we have to keep them all safe. So that takes a ton of volunteers. Yes. And if you are able to just come out for the week and I promise you, you will want to come back year after year. It's so much fun. Um, we also really need sometimes one day volunteers to drive golf carts, donate lunches, um, come out and help us lead arts and crafts. Um, you know, financially donors are amazing. We have some of our 
some of our longtime donors, they sign up and they give $10 a month. Their camp chance is what we call them. And that program is really special to me because it's a lot of camp parents and grandparents that are able to just automatically, we know that they're giving every month and they know that they're part of that journey with us. So there's really easy ways to get involved. Um, and we're such an, a small, accessible organization. We would just love to talk with anybody and learn about what somebody would love to be part of and try to see if we can make that work with us. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. And I always like to wrap up our conversation with Clear Picture Cares with this important question. If you could leave an impression with our listeners on the value of giving back to our community, what would that impression be? Oh, gosh, that's a great question. For me, I've made this my life's work, right? I mean, I'm a decade in. I'm not going anywhere. Um, and for me, the giving back to the community starts with an act of selflessness, right? It starts with this, um, this call to do more and use your leverage in society for good. But what ends up happening is you get more back. And then you keep giving more and then you get even more yeah. back. And it just turns into this way that you can really make a difference in the place you live and in the lives of people you end up loving and cherishing and becoming part of your story. So I would really, if, if we're not the kind of organization that maybe pulls at you, then find one that does because there's such great work happening and there's really a place for everyone to belong. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. I this really enjoyed so our conversation. <laughs> Come back. We'll have to do this again. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That was Thank you. Aaron with uh, Camp Rise Above. I'm Jason Noble with Richard Harris. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening. Reach out. Go to camprizeabove.org. Get your tickets. See you at the gala. See you at the gala. <laughs> and thank you so much. We appreciate it. Have a good day.